Congo was wrong. And so we have had all these challenges, but I want to thank God for this meeting because Elder Princess Evle opened it and told us what he has told us. And I want to thank Elder Samson because he has said we must, we must paint the right picture of our church and wherever we are as communication directors and communication secretaries, we need to promote this to the church boards and even train our members because they are members who have totally refused this logo. And so we need to work together to help the church to understand the right thing. Now, some of us, as you have heard, we are old now. We, uh, we, we cannot do much, but with this team, this army of young people, many of us are excited because they can now take the thing ahead. Uh, I'll give you an example. There was a, a young girl uh, who was my head girl. And she was very, 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 very active. Now, when she became the Union Women Ministries leader, <laughs> she's exploding everywhere and doing a wonderful work. And that is Mrs. Waiswa. So young people, I am excited when you can join us. We are old, we are gone. For me, I'm approaching 60, so I'm, uh, we expired. But when you people come on board with all the vigor and the power, this thing is going to move forward. So whatever we are going to learn from this meeting, we are putting our entire trust in you, our young people. Please do not stop at this. Make Zoom meetings for your districts. Call Elder Gual, call me, and call all these wonderful other friends. Make uh, pro, pro yes, eh? push us if we are not making these meetings. Push us and say, hey, Pastor, we need this meeting. And we are going to be there to stand with you. So Elder, you have a good team. I promise you, you have a good team. And this team is going to do the right thing. And may God bless us as we work together. And let us remember the words of Elder Samson. It's not about money. When you are going to do this job, don't think about money, don't say what, but sacrifice and the Lord will pay you back and the thing will move. God bless us very much. And I look forward to seeing the entire Uganda having the right billboards, posters, and the right signs. God bless us all. Thank you. Thank you very much, Pastor Kagwa. And with those words of blessings, I am going to begin the presentation. Let me just uh, share my screen. Uh, Host, can you please, I'm not able to share my screen. Esther. Esther, can I share my screen now? Yes, Elder. Okay, thank you. Let me make sure that. I'm still disabled. Mrs. Waisua, I'm not able to share my screen. You are the host. <laughs> okay, Elder, I'm, I'm trying it here to, to, uh, to enable you. Okay. But you can go on. Elder, you can go on as we sort it out. Okay, but I, I need to start when the screen, the screen is... You know, my presentation is on a PowerPoint. Mrs. Okay, Esther. As she's... Yes. I was saying, Mrs. Weiss, I may need to pass on the host rights to you because 
I'm saying this Zoom as if there is only one person who can be the host. Yeah, that's okay, what I've been reclaim. looking. Let yeah, me you reclaim re host briefly. Yeah, you reclaim, you reclaim it because I can't make you co-host to share. Okay. Yeah, that's what I was trying. Thank you. Are you able to see my screen? Yes. Yes, Elder. You can see it now. Yes, Elder. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, dear members, for creating the time to come and attend this training. I want to recognize everyone who has made it, and I hope that after this, we are going to be in position to do the right thing. Since 2017, there was a change in how our symbol looks like. And uh, Pastor Kagwa has just mentioned about it. It has been very difficult for the church to accept this. And we find people are still stuck to the old visuals. The Seventh-day Adventist Church is very systematic and methodical in the way it conducts its business. When we say the Sabbath is the seventh day, there's no way it can be the first or the second or the third. And so it is the same principle that we should use in everything that we do. Uh, in 2017, the General Conference came with new visual identity for the Seventh-day Adventist Church. And we have been promoting this all along. So the reason why we have this training is that uh, I think now with this Zoom arrangement, it is possible for us to do this training more conveniently and have more people in a very cheap way. We tried this in the past with Pastor Kagwa where we would gather people and uh, she, he was mentioning about Susan. Susan used to be with us in those meetings, uh, but we achieved very little. But I think now with this um, digital platforms that is available to us, we are able to do this in a better way. Um, one thing I would like you to know is that I know I'm talking to excellent graphics designers. I'm not a graphics designer myself. And so I'm not training you to become a good graphics designer. Our task here with Pastor Kagwa and the rest of the communications directors is just to enlighten you on the visual identity for the Seventh-day Adventist Church how it can be contextualized, how it can be used. And so you can exercise your creativity as a graphics designer. In fact, you, you know graphics designing better than us. I need to learn from you when it comes to graphics designing. But we just want to teach you about our visual identity should be how our symbols should be used as you do your graphics. You do your graphics in very excellent way, but there is a certain way that the symbols of the church, the visual identity of the church should be expressed. So to emphasize the importance of this, I will start by reading a message from the ECD president on new visual identity. And this is a message that he passed to us during the time when this new identity was being launched. Um, Pastor Prince has talked about creation, greed, and that. So it is a very important part of our visual identity. And so we are going to talk about the creation grid and how correctly we can apply creation grid to communicate our message and to make us easily identified from the crowd. Uh, we're going to talk about the church symbol, the color for ECD, the color for East Central Africa Division of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. And we're going to talk about the font that distinguishes us, that makes us stand out. And then we are going to look at the correct applications of the font, the color, the church symbol, and the creation grid. And uh, we are not going to be seen as a disorganized church. Uh, the other reason for conducting this training with the graphics designers is that after this training, 
I would like all the graphics designers to share with us the email addresses where their businesses are located and profiles of their company. And we would like to promote you within all our church institutions as the certified graphics designers to do work for the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Going forward, we wouldn't want any of the leaders to engage a graphics designer who has not been trained on our identity to do graphics work. Yesterday, I had a training. I had an induction on this with the members of the department and the church leaders, and we emphasize this. Uh, some of them are with us here, including our uh, communications director at Central Uganda Conference, Pastor Kagua, who has given us a message also here. He attended the meeting yesterday, so he is also here today. But we want to emphasize that, yes, you've uh, given us your time, but we also want to make sure that going forward, we are forming a partnership. We are going to be together. In case of anything you've not understood, I'm going to share with you templates afterwards that should guide you in the designs. And we want to have you as the only people who can design for us. Uh, you are located in various places. I see some people from Renzori field. I see others from Western Uganda field, Southwestern Uganda field from all regions, Eastern Uganda field. So we will be having you as the main graphics designers in those places. So we need you to have this training. Um, the problem that we will be having also as the leaders, that's why I was speaking with the leaders yesterday. We give our work to graphics designers and we tell them, do for us this. We don't give them the right symbols to use. So they go Googling, getting anything on the web. The logo that was used, I don't know, in 1986, they just use, they present anything. So we, we ended up being, we, we have not been giving guidance to the graphics designers. And dear friends, uh, as we look at the correct applications, uh, I have also put together some of the graphics designs that have been intercepting on the web, and we've put them here because we need to see how certain things have not been right, and we will correct, and then we say this is not how to do it. So we will start by sharing how to do it, and we see also how not to do it. So thank you very much for your time. At the end of this training, we expect improvement in visibility of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. We expect a better understanding of the Adventist visual identity. And we expect to have a certified graphics designers, a team of certified graphics designers that are going to be doing the graphics design for the church. So dear friends, it's a privilege for you to serve your Lord with the skills that you have, with the talent that you have. And we are so glad that you are part of this. As the leaders, we will do whatever is in, within our power to empower you, to equip you with the knowledge so that you are able to serve the Lord. As Pastor Kagwa said, going forward, please feel very free to contact us. Yesterday, I was telling the leaders that whenever I'm contacted by even a local church in a village somewhere, and they want to be guided on the visual identity. I have never hesitated to sit down and do my impressions in the simplest way I want and I send for them to improve on with the graphics designers. I want to start by reading a message from Pastor Blasius Ruguri, our leader at the division, emphasizing the importance of this. Uh, it is my pleasure to introduce the new Adventist Global Identity and Color Recommendation from the East Central Africa Division. The Adventist message is spreading rapidly across our division. We are building new churches, schools, hospitals, clinics, publishing houses, Adventist book centers, mission offices, and centers of influence all across our vast territory. With so many different Adventist institutions, many of which all have their own unique logos. In our effort to stand out, it can be sometimes difficult to show that we all stand together. With the implementation of the new Adventist global identity with the creation grid combined 
combined, we will show the world that regardless of our religion, of our region, entity, or organization, that we are all Seventh-day Adventists. It is our prayer that our new guidelines and ECD color will be tools to help us continue to make mission our priority and mobilize us to reach the world with the irresistible, indescribable, incomparable messages of Jesus. Dr. Blasius Ruguri, president of the East Central Africa Division of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. This is emphasizing the importance of getting this identity right. So dear friends, let us not say it doesn't matter how it is presented so long as people are getting it. That is not how we should do this. Let us present ourselves in an organized way. I want to start by giving a summary of God's order of creation. We all do believe that we were created by God and that is what our Bible tells us. On the first day, light was created. There was darkness initially and light was created on the first day. On the second day, we had uh, water separated, the sky and water. On the third day, we had land and seas. Uh, waters were gathered together and we had the vegetations. And then on the fourth day, we have the sun, the moon, the stars to govern the day and night and mark seasons and days and years. And uh, on, 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 on the fifth day, we had the fish, the birds filling the seas and the air. And then on the sixth day, we had the land animals, you know, man and woman created as well. And then on the seventh day, we are Seventh Day Adventists because we are very firm on the biblical doctrines. We are informed by the Bible in everything that we do. And so creation is an important aspect of our doctrine because it all starts from the beginning. And the attacks of Satan are started from the very beginning. And we need to grasp this so well. And so we have made this as a way of identifying ourselves. We want to communicate this message as a principal message, a key message that the Seventh-day Adventist Church should be proclaiming. So we come to the creation grid. We just gave a summary of how creation happened. But how do we use our visual identity? How do we use our visual applications to also tell this story, to emphasize on this important doctrine? The first day, there was darkness and then light was created as you can see there. And then the heavens and waters, and then we have earth and vegetation. We are now going to the fourth day, the sun and the moon and the stars. We are going to the fifth day that uh, the creatures in the oceans, in the waters and the birds in the air were created. And then on the sixth day, we have animals and man was also created. But then on the seventh day, something interesting happened. God rested. So you see this so much in the way we are doing our visual presentations. Some people sometimes make a lot of mistakes here. But what we are saying here is that for six days, God created the earth and everything that is in it, including us. But on the seventh day, he rested. So on six columns, in the six columns of this artwork you are seeing here on this slide, as you are going to see later, you can have all your graphics designed here. Pastor Prince was saying you can have all the pictures that you want, the pictures of Matoke, the pictures of our athletes here, the picture of the crane, everything that we want, we can present them in the six columns. But the seventh column is only for the church symbol. It is where the church symbol sits. This is reinforcing the message that for six days, God created the world and everything they are in, but on the seventh day, he rested. And therefore we should rest. And on that day, you should not do anything. You should not do any work. It is a day dedicated to worshiping God and resting. And so 
when you are doing your designs and they are intruding into the seventh column, um, it, it's like you are violating the Sabbath, you know? So in our visual presentation, we need that to be appreciated so well. So the Sabbath is a great reminder that God created all of us and that God has overall authority over our lives and Satan hates that. Satan has been fighting that all along and that's why he invented the so-called evolution theory to undermine God's signature on creation. But we are saying we need to keep emphasizing the truth about what happened. And so even in our visual presentations, in the name of our church, we are preaching. Every time someone sees a visual presentation from the Seventh-day Adventist church, even without saying a word, a message should have been preached. So the Sabbath is about who deserves our worship and where our worship is being swayed from the right one, then there is a problem. So we have the creation grid in our visual presentation and there is the Sabbath column that is constantly reminding us that we have to keep the seventh day Sabbath. Now, uh, let's look at the old symbol. Uh, you can see the old symbol, but we stopped using this symbol in 2017. But as you are going to see, so many of our leaders and graphics designers are stuck on this old one and have not been able to change. Maybe we've not sensitized them enough, so we will continue sensitizing as much as possible. And today you also become our ambassadors in this team of sensitizing the public and members of the church on how our identity should be. I'm very excited that the graphics designers here, you are not just graphics designers, but your ministers working together with us and promoting the image of the church, reinforcing the message that we are communicating out there. So we want you to be in position to guide the others out there. We want you to be in position even to see some wrong visual presentations and you are able to intercept and say, hey, you are not doing things the right way. That is the old vision that we were using before. Um, so you can see this one is wrong. This is not correct. We've also been having this. At a certain time, you can see it. You see so many people still going with this kind of design, but it is wrong. We are not using it anymore. It is wrong, as you can see there. This is the church symbol that we are using currently. We are going to be talking about the color later on. But now our symbol looks like this. By the way, this symbol is not supposed to stand in isolation like this. But I've just put it here for purposes of deconstructing it and enabling us to learn. We need to learn. This symbol, dear friends, is a, a great tool of evangelism. It communicates so many messages. It communicates the key messages that we stand for. Just the same way the name of our church is a sermon in itself. And that is why the General Conference has discouraged the, the use of the name SDA. You're going to see in so many digital posters, we are still using SDA. SDA does not mean anything. We are now supposed to talk about Seventh-day Adventist Church. And when we talk about Seventh-day Adventist Church, if I tell someone that I am a member of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, I have preached even before saying so much about other beliefs, before even getting into any literature. We observe the Seventh-day Sabbath, a day that is the signature of God on creation, a day when God rested, a day that God set aside. So whenever we introduce ourselves as Seventh-day Adventists, we are telling them that we keep the Sabbath of the Lord. And Adventists come from the term Advent, 
which is this advent that we are looking forward to. The advent is the second coming of Jesus Christ. So we are, we are, we are Sabbath keepers who are also looking forward to the second coming of Jesus Christ. That is what our name speaks. It is a sermon in itself. So when you say SDA, we have lost out. When you say SDA, we have communicated no message. We may have used that in the past, but currently we cannot do that anymore. Please, as we leave this training, let those mistakes be made by other people, not the graphics designers and the leaders who have attended this. Never should you put in any of your graphics design the acronym SDA. We need to go full with our full name, Seventh Day Adventist Church, because it communicates a message. Now, I want us to understand this symbol. We call it logo sometimes. It, this is an open Bible. Uh, those red arrows are just for purposes of demonstration. That is not what should be there, but we are now in a classroom learning. The open Bible is the base for everything that we do, is the foundation for our faith, is the foundation for our mission. You open the Bible, not just for it to be open, but to read it. So our logo says that we are men and women whose source of guidance is the Bible. We read our Bible on a daily basis and we keep nourishing ourselves. Our Bible should be open. We should not buy Bibles and keep them in a shelf where we wait once in a while, remove it, remove the dust and go to the church. And then when we are back, we put it there again. This is something that we should be consuming on a daily basis. So our logo is communicating the message that the Bible is the source of our of, 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 of everything in our life. It is our spiritual, the source of our spiritual nourishing, and it is our guidance in life. This is uh, the manual for life. When you buy a gadget, you get a manual on how it should operate. The life manual is the Bible. So the, the Bible is very important. We believe in reading the Bible and understanding it the right way and following what is in the Bible. We have in the middle of the Bible, there is a cross. That is just to say that the central thing in our belief, the cross plays a big role. Without the cross, we have no message. We, without the cross, oh, <laughs> we don't have the everlasting gospel to talk about. Without the cross, we wouldn't be preachers. What would we be preaching? What would we be telling people? The greatest news, the greatest thing that ever happened was what Christ did for us on the cross. When we fell to sin and Christ died on the cross to pay the penalty. And so this is the central theme in the Bible. Everything points to Jesus Christ and what he did for us on the cross. Some people say that, oh, this is an inverted cross. It is a cross which is upside down. That is not true. Those are diversionary statements that are just meant to confuse and digress people from accepting the truth that we are teaching. This is not an inverted cross. There is an implied globe inside here, standing on top of the cross. So the cross starts from here and ends here. It's a very normal cross, okay? And then we have these three lines that you are seeing here. They represent so many things. They communicate so many messages. But one of the messages it com communicates is the three angels cycling the world, moving around the world with the everlasting gospel. We do know so well about the three angels' messages in Revelation chapter 14. It's a very important prophetic chapter in our mission. So our symbol is saying that we are believers in the Bible and at the center of the Bible is the cross. The cross is where our sermon comes from. The good news comes because of what Christ did on the cross. 
And we have a mission. We have messages to be spreading around the world. We have the three angels messages that we should be sharing with the world, especially at this time, warning people about what is about to happen, telling people that Christ is about to return. And so you can see it is winding around the global here. It winds around, then it comes going up. And that comes to another message. We can see, if you look at this, they're like tongues of fire, like a flame burning. And this represents the Holy Spirit. Dear friends, nobody here in this group needs to be told the importance of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is very important in our mission, in our personal lives, in our salvation. So you can see um, there is a message already being communicated. And then, we have this flame burning upwards. That is also to say that we are, we are an upward movement. We are looking forward to the second coming of Jesus Christ and what will happen when Jesus Christ returns? What will happen when Jesus Christ comes the second time? He is going to take us up to heaven and we shall be there for a thousand years before coming back to the earth. Uh, that's not the message today. But in brief, this is the message that our symbol is communicating. So it's a very important tool. This is a tool of evangelism. And so for those of us whose churches don't yet have the symbols displayed there, we are missing out in a way. And by the way, our logo is so beautiful that it would improve so much on our visibility. If we did this thing right, and every one of us are, are done, did their part, our visibility would improve, our evangelism would improve because we would be doing it visually. And so this is a summary of what our symbol stands for. Now, we can use our symbol in a lock up when it is locked with a text. That symbol that we saw, it is not supposed to stand alone. We are going to be showing you the symbols that stand alone. But this symbol is supposed to be locked with the text. You can see here, the symbol is here and it is locked with the text, the name of our church, Seventh Day Adventist Church. This is available on downloads. The website that you are being given provides all these downloads that you can download, copy and paste on your work. You don't need to go and start designing this. You don't need to sit on your computer and you start designing this. The church has already invested a lot and done the designs and created the, the and uploaded them and we can only download and use them. Because when we start typing, we are going to be using wrong fonts. We are going to be using uh, wrong spacing. We don't even know how the relationship between the, the symbol and the text is. There's a particular you know, there's some distance that should, there's a proportion that should, they should be occupied within the surface that this is being displayed on. So let us mark this very clearly. This symbol can be used in a lockup with the text. It can be locked with the text. When we say lockup here, we are just saying locked with the text. This symbol always goes with the text. This symbol should never stand alone save for when it is appearing in the creation grid. We are going to be explaining that later. But this is very wrong. We cannot use the round symbol locked up with the text Seventh-day Adventist Church. I see these mistakes being made so many times. It may look so beautiful, but According to the design of the church, the guidance we've gotten from the church, this is not how it should be. This should be used in isolation as we are going to be seeing. This is also another wrong way of using the symbol locked with the text. This symbol in this format cannot be locked with the text Seventh Day Adventist Church. It is wrong. It may look beautiful, but 
according to the guidelines that we've received, the guidance that we've gotten from the communications department of the general conference through the division, this is wrong and we should not follow that. Now, symbol in isolation, in other words, the Seventh-day Adventist church symbols being used as standing alone. The one, the round, the bold one, the round bold symbol is designed to stand alone. You can put that as a sticker, maybe on your gate, you can put it maybe in your church and just silent without any word, without anything like Seventh-day Adventist church, without anything at all. Maybe you can just do a sticker and you put on your car, but you don't put any text there. It silently communicates. It's designed to silently communicate. These other two, they are not highly recommendable. The general conference, the division does not recommend that we use these symbols in isolation. And so let us follow that. Now we are looking at the creation grid. The creation grid, as we saw before, we saw the first day, the second day, the third day, the fourth day, the fifth day, the sixth day, and the seventh day. When we are designing our graphics and we want to apply the creation grid, we need to know that even though we may not be seeing any separation of the columns, there are assumed six columns from this side to this side. Sorry. And then the seventh column, this is where we are going to put the logo. But sometimes we see people just having a certain strip on this side. Sometimes the strip is not even one seventh. Maybe it is one tenth of the entire area printed or displayed. Or sometimes it is maybe like uh, two over seven, two sevenths of the entire area of display, which is wrong. We have to ensure it is one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. We may not have this line separating the columns, but they are assumed. You should do your measurements when you're doing your graphics design to ensure that the seventh column is exactly one seventh of the entire display area. There are six columns here on which you can do all your work, but the seventh column is what you keep. Now, I'd also like to guide on how we can use the symbols. Remember we said this symbol is not good to use in isolation, but in the creation grid, it is very correct to use in the seventh column. We have the first column, the second, we have Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Sabbath. This is where that symbol is allowed to be used in a form that it may appear to be in isolation. It appears in the creation grid. But dear friends, the round symbol, the round bold symbol should never at any one time be used in the creation grid. Please don't make that mistake. Sometimes it looks good. It may look appealing to the eye, but according to the design guidelines that we've gotten from the general conference, our leadership at the top, we should not do that. And uh, I don't want us to get into a lot of questions, but why? It looks good. It's not a problem. Yeah, the church which gave it to us has said, this is how we should use it. So we need to be aware of that. Still more on the Sabbath column. This is very correct. When you use it, uh, there's the Ming color as the background and the, the logo or the symbol is appearing in white. Here there's one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. This is correct. Uh, sometimes there may not be any color background. It may just be a white surface on the seventh column. But as long as you count from here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, you can still have the logo which is in the mean color against the white background. Or you can have the logo in white color against the mean background. All that is correct.
discharge East Central Africa Division is the color which is called Ming. And the Pantone for that color is 7474C. When you want to get it from your designing application properly, that is how you can order for that color from the system, then it comes. But there are also other colors that can be used around that. There are other shades that are derivatives of this. This is not precisely green, but it is uh, a mix of other colors, but the main component, the main color in this is green, but it is a shade that deviates a little bit from the green as the way we know it. And we can use those other colors that are closely related. There are some shades around that that we can use as you are going to see. The ECD color is a shade of green and uh, ECD did not just pick on this. This color symbolizes so many things. When you go to the study of color, the understanding, the meanings of color, you know, it's, 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 it represents conscience. It symbolizes conscience, having a conscience. It symbolizes green. Whenever there's green, there is growth. Whenever there's green, there's growth. If you see plants which are still very green, they're growing. If you see plants, which are now pale and the colors are changing. They are not growing. So we are emphasize, We are saying that in East Central Africa division, we are a growing church. It also represents spirit of council. It represents, it symbolizes wealth and health, prosperity, provision. When there is a lot of green around us, when you see the trees, when you see the matoke, when you see the fruits around the green, we know that God has provided for us. It is also a symbol of new life. Green is a symbol of newness, new life. Green is also a symbol of fertility. We are supposed to be a fertile ground where the word of God is planted and it grows and it is harvested and it nourishes people. It also represents usefulness and our environment. So this is a color which has a lot of message. ECD did not just pick on that color. It had, ECD had very good reasons behind picking this color. So my dear friend, as you are going to see in so many of our designs, sometimes the graphics designers totally disregard our colors. You know, only one color in a, a digital poster may be very monotonous, I understand. I'm not saying that you should not use any other color, but the theme color, should be in all the designs that we do, but done in a very creative way so that that theme color of ours is still there. That distinctness of the Seventh-day Adventist in terms of visual identity is not lost on the public. But sometimes we get designs as you are going to be seeing that doesn't have anything to do with our color. You will find the logo is in red. You will find just maybe yellow everywhere and we don't have a symbol of our theme color anyway. My dear friend, I don't know if you've ever imagined MTN with its logo in red. Maybe it has made some poster and everything appearing there is red or green and there isn't any yellow in it at all. That is the same thing that happens. Whenever we do our designs, we use fonts that are not the correct fonts. We are I'm going to be talking about the font. And then whenever we're also doing, you know, our, our, our visual presentation that disregard our theme color, the ECD color. This color is called Mink. The pantone of that color is 747C. You graphics designers understand when we talk about the pantone and therefore you can know how to order for that color from your application very easily. Then we have Advent Sons. This is the font that has been designed specifically for the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Dear friends, the redesign of our symbol, the design of this font and all the aspects around this, our global identity, visual identity, it costs the General Conference over 5 million US dollars. A lot of research was conducted and it's a huge investment that when we are not utilizing it to enhance our visibility, to promote our mission, 
we are really doing a disservice. We need to follow the guidelines that we have been given. Now, our logos can appear in various forms. Our symbols can appear locked up with text in various forms. This is one of them, which is centered. You have seen this kind of display. In the old logo, we have that display, but now this is the modern one, the latest one, the digital one, which we can use in our designs. You don't need to go and start drawing this and sketching this. It is already available in download. And please, dear friends, I want us to mark the relationship between the border lines here and how the logo sits and how the text sits. The spacing here, we are also going to talk about the spacing. So that's why when you do your own typing, you're not going to get the spacing right. You're not going to get the, the fonts right. So many of us, sometimes you're going to be seeing in some of the posters that we have uh, shared here, you find the symbol is picked out and then they type anything below it in any font and in any spacing. And you find that we are not doing things the right way. These logos are available in download. They are in all colors, by the way. There are over 18 colors in which they are uploaded. But I just picked the color which is for us in the division, not to confuse us a lot. And as you go online to study, to explore, there are so many colors. But I want you to ensure that whenever you are designing something for the Seventh day Adventist Church and you are within the East and Central Division of the Seventh day Adventist, please use the major color. You can use other colors creatively, but in a way that it makes sense. Your graphics designers you know this so well. You know how you can put the colors around. You also know how you can, you can uphold this color, the theme color, and the identity of the Seventh day Adventist Church. This is the symbol locked up with the word Seventh day Adventist text. Uh, it could also be in this option. This is in mint color against a white background, but you could also have it in white color against a mink background. Usually this one brings more effect, especially when you are doing a signage or you are making some display, the visibility is usually, you know, stronger this way, but you can as well use this one. If you feel it will, it, it depends on how your design is. If it brings good effects on the design that you're doing, you can use a Ming against white background. But uh, if this one will bring a better effect, you can use white logo against a Ming background. Now, there is also standard Adventist text that I would like to bring to your attention. Again, this is available on download and it is registered by the way, trademarked, registered. That means the church has done a lot of research about it. And so when it is registered, it should be used the way it is. My dear friends, when you go in a, a graphics design and you write your text in any, 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 any font, you are doing a great disservice to us. The symbol, when it is used in locked up with the text, with the name Seventh-day Adventist Church. It is, should be strictly in the Advent font. You can download font, and in your, in your typing, in the designs, you can get it. But since we know that you can make a lot of mistakes, already this is available. You just need to download it, copy, paste on where you want to do your work. Then you can work around the other graphics, but ensure that the, the main thing, the central thing, the symbol of the church, the text bearing the name of the church is in the right font and it is positioned correctly in relationship to the symbol. And we are going to be doing, we are going to be seeing how that relates. This is another option of the standard Adventist text, but this is now white against the Ming background. The other one was Ming against the white background. There are also shades of colors against it. It can be grayish color also. You can have maybe white against grayish color uh, as you've seen in the shades. 
around the mean color that are recommended. This is white text against the Ming background, standard Adventist text. This is standard. In other words, we should not use anything that is other than this. We should not type this Seventh-day Adventist in any logo. Let's just download the text and we use it in the respective symbol. When you are writing, maybe on Microsoft Word or any other thing, you can use other whatever phones you are going to be using, uh, that's not a problem. But when you are doing design, the church has made it easier for us to uphold the design, to do the design. And this is 100% of the work already done for you. Sometimes I, do, I, I find people trying to, to get their paint brushes. They want to design a signage. They want to do it in their own hands. You cannot replicate exactly what the church has already done. This is a digital thing and let us just adopt this digital approach, download and apply it in whatever text that, whatever visual presentation that we want to do. I've made a lot of emphasis on this because this is important and many of us are getting it wrong. Then we have the standard logo. The standard logo is a lockup of the church symbol and the text Seventh-day Adventist Church. Again, this is available on download. This text alone is also available on the downloads, but the standard logo is also available in downloads with the text locked with the symbol already. Sometimes you find the text, the text alone is also available on download. And we are going to be showing you how you are going to be using this. So the standard logo is how it appears here. Later on, we are going to see the relationship on how the distances, how they occupy the space, the proportions that should be in the surface. We are going to be seeing that. We could also have it, the standard logo, white against the Ming background. Now, this is the symbol when it is standing alone. It should not stand alone, but we, we're just showing. Uh, we can have Ming against a white background or white against a Ming background. This is for demonstration purposes. But in our design work, we should never have it standing alone like this. This stands alone anywhere. You can just have this on your wall somewhere and that is it. You can have it at the gate of your church and that is it. You can have it displayed somewhere, maybe a sticker in your car. That already communicates a message about the Seventh-day Adventist church. It is symbol in isolation. It is not supposed to be used locked up with any text. And I already demonstrated how not to do it earlier. Please let's take note of that. We are going to see that there are so many people who have this and they put some text next to it, SDA church. That is also another mistake. It, it's a mistake to lock it up. And then it is even more of a mistake to even lock it up with SDA instead of Seventh-day Adventist church. So this symbol should be used in isolation, not locked with any text. There should be no text around it. It could be, also in, this one is white against a Ming background, but it could also be Ming against a white background. As you can see, it is appearing in a white background and uh, it is done in the Ming color. Now, this symbol also, that is a way in which it relates to the surface where it is displayed. When you make the download and you paste it anywhere, automatically it appears in this border. I find sometimes people making mistakes whereby you find the logo is just this small. It is reaching to the border of the, of the display space. But there are assumed seven columns also here. There is one column here. There are five columns inside here. And then there's another column here. 
So this is 5x, meaning that the space between here and here is five times the space between here and here. This, this logo, this symbol is usually in a square. And this is how it fits. So uh, the space from where the Bible opens and this flap where it falls, as you can see here, there is also another space of one column, one out of seven that is here. So the symbol occupies the five inner grids. There are seven grids like this, but the five inner grids, if you can count, these are five, these are five, these are five, these are five, plus this is six and seven. Plus when you are counting downwards, plus this is six and seven. So the five grids inside is where the logo occupies. So please don't just put the logo haphazardly. You've seen the logo, just copy paste somewhere. No, this is how the design should be. And that's why it is important that you download. You don't just pick it from anywhere because if you just pick it from anywhere, you're not going to be aware of the proportions that should be occupying within the space in which it is being displayed. This is very important, dear members. Let's take note of it. And even when you put it in the Sabbath column, I see sometimes someone has his six columns and the seventh column, and the logo is occupying from one part of the column to the other. That is not correct. You should also, within that column, maintain this space. Make your computation that, and you ensure that the logo is occupying. Make sure there are seven grids, but the five grids inside is where the logo is sitting, where the symbol is sitting. We are emphasizing this so much and it's very important. We are about to finish, we are running out of time, but we are going to finish. Now we are going to entity identifiers. Uh, what we say entity identifiers, what do we mean? Uh, we are saying, uh, this is now how we have our logo. I have done these things to demonstrate. If you go online, you are going to be finding out also. You can see the size of the font when we are using it in the lockup, Seventh Day Adventist Church, according to how it is downloaded. When you are displaying it in a space like this, the height of the font Seventh day Adventist Church, and the height is determined from here to here, as you can see. Let us call it X. Now, if the height of the font is X, say, for example, it is one centimeter, our X is maybe one centimeter. Then, from where the logo stops, we have another line, and then to the top, we have two X two centimeters, for example. That is the height of this space times two, that is what should be here. And this is how it has been demonstrated. Sometimes we have logos which just stops here. It is just squeezed like that, but there's some spacing that should be considered. Dear friends, we are going to share this so that it can continue guiding you. When you are doing your design, I know you are great designers. You are better designers than me. I'm actually not a designer. I keep emphasizing, but I'm, also, I'm only guiding you on how the symbols of the church fit within the excellent designs that you do. And knowing that you people are very good designers, if you get this right, we are going to be so happy as a church. Our visual identity is going to be done so well. So this is to demonstrate the spacing. It is not just a matter of logo here, text here, and that is it. There is some spacing. There are some proportions of the space that should be occupied. There are also rules governing how it should fit. This is for demonstration purposes. Usually we don't have our logos with a lot of this around. We just see the clean thing, but we're in a classroom, we are just doing demonstration. And when you are doing the one which is sent center, there is also some spacing consideration that you should consider. Uh, you have the one which is just downloaded. This is how it should appear. It's so much, the principle is so much like the other one. 
I don't need to explain so much because I've explained the other one. And in any case, when you share with me your email addresses, I'm going to share with you this so that when you are sitting down to design something, you can understand. And I, I can assure you, friends, by the time you do this three, four, five times, you are going to be excellent and you are going to be reproducing good work whenever you are given the word, the work. Let's do the hard work of studying this. And I must admit to you that if I were not the communications director at the union, I wouldn't be knowing all this. And so uh, uh, for, for those who are doing the symbols, the, the identity in the wrong way, we are not condemning anyone. We are helping each other here because even us in the communications department, we've been learning this the hard way. Together with my communication counterparts, including Pastor Kagua and Pastor Twine, Pastor Singoma, Pastor Robinson, those ones whom you've seen online, we've also been learning from the time this new identity came into play. So let's observe those guidelines in terms of spacing, in terms of uh, the relationship with the entire space where the display is done. Now, this is about line and spacing also. Uh, the standard logo, the standard logo, how it is displayed, uh, we also observe some guidelines here, some rules are here. The height of the font, let's call it 1x. When you have seventh day, the spacing between seventh day and the word Adventist church is also 1x. Maybe it is one centimeter, the spacing here is also one centimeter. And then we have also the height of the font here, of course, it is the same height. And then we also have the, a similar space. You can see it is one, 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 one. And then this is the primary identifier. The primary identifier in our design here is the Seventh Day Adventist Church. This is the key entity, the main entity we are talking about in Uganda here is the, the Seventh Day Adventist Church or even in the world. But I just assume that I'm designing this for Ruenzori Field. So if we want to say this is Seventh Day Adventist Church, Ruenzori Field, what should guide us in how we do the spacing? Again, it's not just a matter of punching in Renzori field under this and you are done. Actually, it is recommended that where possible, you have the secondary identified, the secondary entity. The primary entity here is the Seventh Day Adventist Church. And then the secondary identity is Renzori field. It could be Mount Olives. It could be Kinawataka Upper or Kinawataka Lower. It could be Naja Nankumbi. So you could have Seventh day Adventist Church, Naja Nankumbi. Seventh day Adventist Church, Mount Zion. Seventh day Adventist Church, Mount Olive. But the size of the font for the primary identity is larger than the size of the font, the height of the font of the secondary identity. You can see now Renzori field, the name Renzori is 75% seven, or 0 0.75 of Adventist church of the height that you can see here. So assuming this is one centimeter, it means Renzori should appear in 0 0.75 centimeters. And then if we are saying Renzori field or Kinawataka upper or whatever it is, it is recommended that they appear in two lines, but between those, there is a half of the distance, a half of the height of the primary identity, the primary identity font, as you can see here. If the height here is one centimeter, it means here, the separation between the spacing in the secondary identifier is 0 0.5 of the height that you are seeing here. It may look a bit, of, a, a bit of confusing, but just look at the proportions there as they are indicated, and you will follow that. Your graphics designers, 
very excellent people, very smart. You know how to deal with spacing, but this is what should guide in the space. Again, as you do this, the more you do, the more you become perfect in doing this. Let us now look at some of the applications. We are coming so close to the end of the presentation. I didn't want us to go so long. This is how the creation grid has been used somewhere. But on the seventh day, he rested. Okay, you can see there are six columns, one, two, three, four, five, six. And then there is the seventh column where the logo sits. The creation grid is here. This is the Sabbath column. Six days to do all your texts, but the seventh column, only the symbol of the church. Six days to do all your work, but the seventh day is the Lord's Sabbath, in which you should, which you should keep holy and in which you should rest and watch it in. Uh, this is another design. Uh, this is not in our country. The colors are different, but disregard the color and just see the design. The symbol used in isolation can also be used in a creation grid. But you use it in creation grid, but you don't put it in the Sabbath column. If you want to use this, you can get space within the six columns, but you have the seventh column here without anything touching on it. And there you can use that symbol. I'm going to give you further examples on how this can be done. Some of the applications are here. You have a book that you've printed, please bear in mind to keep the creation grid in mind. There are six columns from here to here, and then there's a seventh column here, and we have the logo here. We are still following the same principles. This is another very interesting one. We have six columns here, and we have the Sabbath column here, but interestingly, there isn't any logo within here, but instead there's a logo outside within the six columns. When you want to use the round, the bold, one which stands in the isolation, the symbol that stands in the isolation, in a creation grid, don't put it in the Sabbath column. You can put it anywhere, but creatively that there's good visibility, it looks good. But as you can see here, it is not locked. There are texts down here, there are texts up there, but this one is standing alone. It is not locked with any text. So you can have your creation grid, you can have the Sabbath column here, but if you want to use this bold symbol, which should stand in isolation, don't put it in the creation grid. You can put it anywhere within the six columns, but in a creative and a presentable way. Now, um, signages. I just want us to see how we can go about with the business of doing our signages. If you are doing a signage, this is just a sketch to lead you. You can have it either standing vertically or you can have it horizontally, but applying the creation grid principles. When it stands vertically, remember, usually the logo, the symbol is within a square area. This is one X, this is one X. Assume this is one meter, this is also one meter and the logo sits within that one meter. So the logo should display within that one meter or uh, one meter square or, uh, or whatever area that you look at, whatever dimensions you're looking at. This could be 80 centimeters by 80 centimeters. It can be 1.2 meters by 1.2 meters, but the area in which the logo sits should be a square and you know, already I told you about the seven grids here and the five grids within which the logo should sit. That principle should be applied even when we are doing our signage. And there is also the spacing that you need to consider here. And then you have Seventh Day Adventist Church. Remember, now we are getting the text, which is not locked. Just downloading the text, Seventh Day Adventist, copy pasting here. And then you come to your Bunga Central. Bearing in mind the, the, the dimensions that you should use. If this is one centimeter, then this should be 0 0.575 centimeters. And the space between Bunga and Central should be 0 0.5 centimeters. That is how we should be guided. And you can have other text here. And it is recommended 
that the height of the signage should be 3x. If this is 1x, if this is 1.2 meters, then from here to here should be 2.4 meters. So altogether we have, you know, uh, 1.2 times that is 3.6 meters, or it could be three meters, whereby the, the, the logo area is one meter, then you will have two meters for where other texts are standing and what is supporting the signage from the ground. That is one option. Another option you could do is to use the creation grid principle. Here you have the six columns in which to have your Seventh-day Adventist church. Again, you just download this text and you put it here and then you have logo this side. Please make sure that you are keen on the spacing from this side to where the name Seventh-day Adventist Church stands and this side. You need to be very keen on that. We are going to see a graphical version of that. So our signages can be in these two formats. And these are the two formats that have been recommended by the division. And we should use this. Our graphics designers, I know you're in the churches, communication directors in the local churches, those who are not yet having the right signages. Please pull down the old signages, which were 2017, and we have new things taking place. Okay, we proceed, we continue. We're about to come to a conclusion. Uh -huh. This is also a guideline when you are doing the creation grid principle in doing your signage. Uh, look at all this demonstration in terms of the, the distances, um, the proportions that are occupied. Again, we start with the height of, with the height of the name Seventh-day Adventist Church, the font that has been used here. Let's say the height we are talking about here is one centimeter. Then from the top of the word Seventh-day Adventist Church, there should be two centimeters up. And then there should be two centimeters between here and where the Sabbath column begins. I know with this graphics presentation, it will be easy for you to master. This is two X, two times the distance two times the height of the font, two times the height of the font. So you can see that the font, the text also are put in this surface and there is a certain way it relates with the space around it. It is not just getting the text and throwing it anywhere and appearing anyhow. There are some rules which are being followed here and it is very important that you master this. I hope we are together on this. Some applications. Our business cards, this is how they should be. Friends, today I still find business cards done in the old symbol and in the way that is not recommended by the church. If you go through the identity website, there are so many formats of business cards, but the principle of creation grid is the same. This is the one which ECD, the East Central Africa Division of the Seventh-day Adventists picked. And this is how our business cards should be. When someone comes to you, please, I need a business card. You should be in position after this training to guide them on how the business card should be. They should not tell you how it should be. It may as well be a pastor. He will come and say, I want it this way, I want it that way. No, but you can say you're a professional, you're a designer. You can say according to the guideline, this is not how it should be. Please provide the guidance. And that's why we are sharing this knowledge with you so that you can be very helpful to the church and you help us on improving on the visibility. I keep emphasizing, dear friends, you are very important in this. This is not something we can achieve without you. We are not graphics designers. At the end of the day, we have to come to you for these designs to be done, to be applied, to be mixed with other texts and other graphics for us to communicate a message. So we need you in this. We are just equipping you with a little bit of it, but most of the work you are the one doing. 
so that the visibility of the church and identity of the church is enhanced. This is an envelope. It may not be very clear here. Again, we have our standard logo, which you just download and you put here. And then you have Western Uganda fields, for example. And then you can have your, uh, you know, uh, postal addresses and uh, your website and other details here. I just did this for demonstration. Just assume this is an envelope. This is the cover of an envelope. This is how it should be. Our business cards. This is our letterhead. This is how our letterhead should be, friends. Still, we are using the creation grid. There are six columns from here to here in which you can do your text. But the seventh column is where the logo sits. And the logo can sit either below the artwork or up. There is no problem. In some instances, it can even be in the middle, but they don't look so good. So you can just see what looks good for you. Sometimes maybe when there's a lot of crowding this side, you may want to decongest a little bit and you put it down, or you can exercise your discretion on this. This is the only area you can be creative on whether to put it up or down. But you need to observe that this is also sitting in the five grids inside. There are six grids from here to this place, but the five inner grids is where the logo occupies. So you can see some space here. There is some space here. You find in some designs, this Bible flaps up to the edge here and up to this place. That is wrong. We are going to demonstrate some of the designs that have been done, not the right way. So you can have the, the addresses of the company either up here that you're following the principles. You can see for this letterhead, uh, for this letterhead, the, the logo is appearing up here. In this one, it's appearing down. Same principle, there's no problem. We can allow that. Now, these are some of the designs we find flying all around. You go online and you are bombarded with this. Now, I know from today, now that you have learned the right way of doing it, you will feel the kind of pain I feel. You can't imagine how me, my counterparts like Pastor Kagwa feel so bad when they see anything done so wrongly. Uh, I, my elder, elder Muviru also has gotten to know about our designs. And whenever he sees any visuals in a good, not done the right way, he really gets irritated. But uh, Dr. Wahire also who has mastered this, you don't know so many times how he has been telling me, Elder, we need to do a training. Elder, we need to do a training. Now we can see that this is so wrong. Now, I'm not blaming anyone. I'm not condemning anyone. This was done within the knowledge that our people did have. So uh, our elder here may have just gone to a graphics designer and said, I have a program, I wanted to do a, a poster to, 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 to promote it. I don't know if we have the designer of this in this group. Some of you are going to see some of the work you've designed. We've displayed them here for purposes of learning, not to condemn anyone. Because in any case, you are very good designers. You do very beautiful designs. You can do beautiful designs than me. But our area of interest is only how the church symbol fits within that good design that you're doing, the graphics design you're doing. We have the one here by my elder, Pastor Mubiru. Elder Mubiru here, he was uh, preaching. And uh, we have one here which was advertised. Let, let's first see the one for where Elder Mubiru is supposed to preach. You can see Uganda SDA Community Church, Toronto. Now, uh, one, we are discouraging the word SDA. And uh, so this can be done in a different way. And then our theme color should also appear somewhere at least. These are just for purposes of learning. And I know Elder may have gone to a graphics designer and say, do this for us. It doesn't stop from there. This is from Renzori Fields. And I hope the person who designed it is in the house. You can see a program for Pastor Mate on Light FM. 
I don't know if this one is the Seventh Day Adventist Church. I don't know if Dr. Mate is a pastor of the Seventh Day Adventist Church, and uh, whether those officers are. There isn't anything Adventist about this, and it is being displayed. When something has to do with our church, please let's make sure we've branded it the right way when it is going out there. So this is another example of uh, a graphics design, which is a good, a good design, but it is missing out on that. Uh -huh, let's go on. Uh, we are now just displaying, we can see this. SDA, KCC, and East Kampala Family Life and Health Ministries Department. Um, I have no problem with the design, but the use of the church identity, the symbols. This is a symbol that we stopped using. Okay, he got, they, 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 they got this one right, picked it from somewhere and locked it with, with a different font, which we are no longer using. This is a font whose usage stopped. And uh, in the naming of our entities, it, it, we should have had something like this, then we have Kampala Central. But now you can see all this. Now, um, as I said again, th there's no condemnation. We are not condemning anyone. We are learning. We are learning from one another. So we need to improve on this. So. Uh, uh, the graphics is good. The program, they are, uh, how all the other things have been, you know, designed here is good. I have no problem because I'm not a graphics designer. Maybe I may not even know what good graphics is, but at least I know how the naming of the church should be and how the symbols of the church should be displayed and how the symbols of the church should be locked with text. Okay, we, we have one there, my very good friend, Pastor Dunstan being promoted. I, I, I don't know, maybe it is Brian who designed this. This is a very good design. I love this design. But only our color has been disregarded. The color of Prime Radio instead is the one which is now used here. So uh, I, 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 I know there are six columns from here to here and this is seventh column. If only, this was in the Ming color, and then the logo is displayed as it is here. Uh, it was a good design, but you only missed on that. So many of you are doing really so good, but we only need to make those adjustments so that we can be doing the right thing. Let's look at another one. Aha, uh -huh, look at this. The program on uh, BBS, we have used here a logo whose usage stopped. And uh, the designer may not be knowing, and that is why now we are doing this. If the person who designed this is in this group, please let us improve on this. Uh, moreover, when the Bishop of Central Uganda Conference is being displayed with the wrong symbol, it is really not so good for our image. We need to do the right thing. Okay, that is one. We are not condemning anyone, we are learning. We are doing this just to learn, not to blast anyone, but just to learn. Uh, let's see another one. This is my friend, Pastor Nsereko from uh, West Buganda Field. Um, a logo was just picked from somewhere, thrown there, put any text here, don't follow any rule. This is what we have now. For pasta, you may have gone to a graphics designer, please, I have a program, do this. And the graphics designer just does, uh, the poster maker is here. Please, if you are the one who designed this, I know today you have learned, you are not going to do this again. You will follow the guidelines. And, and I'm available to guide you, even after this presentation. Pastor Kagua is available. All the other communication directors are available to guide you. And those who have already mastered it well, they are available to guide you. If you get in touch with Susan, she will guide you. If you get in touch with Sandra, she will guide you. If you get in touch even with Dr. Samson Rahire, those are communication people in the church. They will guide you. Uh, we have this, I don't know who designed this, Makerere University Seventh-day Adventist Association. There is no problem locking up 
Makerere University Seventh Day Adventist Association with the logo. But when you are using any text locked with the logo, then the text must be in the Advent Sans. It must be in that font. And then the other mistake I see here, seventh uh, day. But usually when we, we are in a logo, when we are doing a lockup with the logo, the name of the church appear in the lower case. And there is a hyphen between H and D. But in this, we don't see it there. Otherwise, it's a very good design. I love the design. I only wish we can just make those changes. And then uh, the logo of the university should be a little far away. It should not be seen to be like the same logo. It's, it's combined with the logo of the church. It can be pushed aside a little bit. So a great design, a great design. Only the guidance on the Adventist identity needs to be adhered to. We are coming to the end. Um, I know I have some friends from Kitswampa. Kitswampa, they have my very good friends. Uh, that is where my father worked for many years as a missionary. And I am a friend of those people. You can see the design that they have done here. Uh, whoever designed this, I am sure he is in this group. If he's not in this group, he will get to know. Surely from what we have learned today, please don't do this again. You have now learned the right way. With the knowledge that you had, this was a great design from the knowledge that you had. But now after this guidance, we expect that we will do something better than this. So dear friends, you can see we've been having a lot of problems with these designs being done the wrong way. Oh, we have a very active ministry. This is uh, for our women's ministries. Uh, you can see Makerere University Seventh Day Adventist. This is, uh, I don't know which font is this. I don't know if it was supposed to be locked up with this. Uh, this is not the right way to do it. And uh, it's just because the guidance had not been there. Otherwise it is all the other things, the, the, the women's ministries logo here is very okay. The design is good. I like the design. Uh, the color theme is fine, but we just needed to have the logo done. Logo should never be used in isolation. It should, when we use this, it should always be locked with the text Seventh Day Adventist Church and as the primary entity and the secondary entity will also be there. Maybe Seventh Day Adventist Church, Uganda Union, something like that. Uh, we can see another one also, a design here. This is from North Buganda Field. Um, they downloaded the right logo, I can see. But the text is also in the right form format, but the proportions that we are talking about, the height of the text here should be 0.75% of the height of the, the, the primary identity. Now, Wobulens is more prominent in appearance here than the Seventh-day Adventist Church. The Seventh-day Adventist Church should be, if the height of the font is one, the height of the font for Wobulens should be 0.75, 75% of the font for the primary identity. And then I also see a lot of purple here. Our color is totally disregarded here. Otherwise, it's also a great design that if it is creatively done and our colors and the correct usage of logo and uh, the texts, then it would be so good. I, I, I applaud our graphics designers. What you're doing is so good. You only needed this extra guidance and uh, we will be flying. Uh, we have this from my very good friend, uh, Midwest Uganda Mission. Uh, application of the creation grid. But if you look at the distance from here to here, if this is, if, if, if we had so many of such columns, maybe they are going to just be five here. So the creation grid has been used here, but there are only like five columns. So uh, this is violating our creation grid. The creation grid should have seven columns, whereby six 
for other texts and the seven for, for the logo, for the symbol. So uh, this may not quite communicate our creation message because uh, the columns here, maybe they will be four, and this is the fifth column. As it should be six columns here, and then the seventh column this side to make the complete creation grid. Otherwise, the designer is good. The design is good. I can see they downloaded the text very well, but also it wouldn't be good to use the black text against that background. Maybe it should have been white against because that one is one of the shades of the colors that we are using. Great design, but only those areas that we need to observe. The creation grid should be seven columns. And then uh, I, I see the proportion of the secondary identity to the primary identity is not bad. There could be just slight improvement on this and we could be good to go. Uh, gentlemen, ladies uh, and gentlemen, we are coming to the end. The same with Makerere. We've already commented on this, on what should be done. And then uh, we also have another one here, our bishop. Uh, this is being displayed here. The logo that should be used in isolation should be the round bold one, but not this one. This one should be locked up with the text, Seventh-day Adventist Church or Central Uganda Conference Communication Department, whatever it is for the church, using the right font. But now we have this and we have this Tosugwa and there we go. And then we have SDA. We are discouraging this, my dear friends. As much as possible, there should be enough space for you to say Seventh Day Adventist Church. Let us stop the use of SDA in all our designs, but instead do the full Seventh Day Adventist. We have here my very good pastor, Pastor Bumali, Kintu in Luero. Uh, this is part of North Buganda Field. You can see here SDA Luero Main Church. Whereas we should have Seventh Day Adventist Church, Luero Main. The primary identity being Seventh Day Adventist Church in the right text, in the right lockup with the symbol. And then with the right proportion, we have Luero Main. Then we are good to go. It's a great design, a very good design. I like the way it has been done. But if we just observe that, yeah, we have also again here another one for Uganda Union Women's Ministries. Uh, uh, it is locked up with this, but the color variation here is, 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 is not recommendable. We should not have different colors when we are locking up with the... Then we have here SDA Kampala Central Church Midweek Fellowship. We are discouraging the use of the term SDA. I keep emphasizing that. Please, let's say Seventh Day Adventist Church. The right text, the right lockup with the symbol, and then we are good to go. I have no problem with the other design. I'm not a graphics designer, a designer, so any design is good to me. As long as the visual identity guidelines are adhered to. And then we see where the logo is appearing in a different background from the background of the grid, the column here. So I think this was a cut and paste from somewhere. And instead of the logo also occupying the five inner grids, it is spreading up to the edge of the column. Uh, with slight changes, this can be corrected and we have it done the right way. Okay, we have here Seventh-day Adventist Church. This was downloaded and it's, it's okay. The red appears sort of uh, maybe because of health and it was appealing on issues of COVID-19 and things like that but we should have also had uh, the primary identity here. But red is not the color that we are using, dear friends. Our color is Ming. That is what we should be using. So either we should be having a Ming background or a shade related to it, then we have our white logo against it. Or we can have a color that can allow the logos to be in Ming and it, it, it can look good. Uh, we have this. Needless to say, uh, the color is not right. Uh, the font, all wrong. Uh, very beautiful background here, but I wish we had observed that. We are not condemning anybody. 
I'm not saying anyone is, uh, I'm not condemning, but we're just saying this is how the guideline should be. If I didn't have this guideline, maybe I would have done worse things than this. Uh, then we have this Seventh day Adventist church, how it's displayed. Uh, this one, they've used this symbol in a very good way. And uh, they try actually to do the thing well. Uh, maybe we should have added here. Uh, okay, this is the church for uh, Pastor Seventh day Adventist church. But now we should, uh, the, the text, Seventh day, there should be a hyphen between seven and day. And when we are having the name of the church displayed in a visual presentation, in a design like this, we should use the standard font, the Advent Sand. So here also just a slight alteration and we have the right thing. Um, we have also, I don't know who is designing for our bishop at Central Uganda Conference. It is so annoying that something that has, is associated with our bishop goes with the wrong symbols on it. It makes me feel like crying. I am appealing to the graphics designer doing this. Since this is the figurehead for Central Uganda Conference, contact Pastor Roger Skagwa before any design is circulated out there. But even with the training we've had today, you should be in position to do something better. If you wanted to use this format, now you see Seventh-day Adventist Church is in one line, yes, you downloaded the right font, I can see, because it has the trademark there. Then we have Central Uganda Conference displayed in a more prominent way than the primary entity, which is the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Why couldn't you just download the, 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 the symbol in a centralized way, and you add Central Uganda Conference below in the right way? Again. The designer may not have known the right way of doing it, but this is now an opportunity. But I'm emphasizing, especially for our conference and the union, let us not put anything out to public before the communication, the respective communication director sees. This is applicable to also the other fields. So we, we, we will have to correct on this. But all this other, the design is so good, excellent, but uh, the designer lacked guidance on how to use the symbols and the text and our visual identity generally. Uh, this one is good, except for those few changes that we suggested. And so we are done with the presentation. I was just displaying some of the logos, some of the visual digital posters that we've had that have not adhered to what we should be doing. So way forward, we want us to commit to the use of the guideline, the proper use of our font, the proper use of our color, the proper use of our symbol, the logo, how it should be locked up. Please let us adhere to that now that we know. I also appeal to you to consult the union conference field or your mission communications director when not sure. I would also like you to all share with me your email address, addresses, so that we can make this presentation in a very good way and share with you the template that you should be using in the design. When any member of the church comes to you seeking for design work, then you need to be properly equipped. To a large extent, I blame ourselves in the communications department. We may have been doing wrong things because we were not informed and it is the duty of the communications department to ensure that people are trained. With the Zoom and these other platforms, I think it is going to be possible for us to do this in a much better way. I am very much open to come and do another training if there is a request for. And I thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen, for all the time that you've given to hear me to participate in this training. May God bless you. Thank you. So at this point, I welcome comments. Yes, I, I Elder. Let me. Yes, sir. Yes, Elder. Um, thank you very much for the presentation. And thank uh, you, my elder. Yes, it has been very good. I, I just wanted to share some resources which our designers can use. They are free resources. Okay. 
I, I okay. have shared them. I have shared them in the um in the in the chat chat box. Yes. So they yes. can get in touch with them. But there's something I wanted to show. Let me share my screen. And, yes. Uh, Please do. Uh, oh, I can't share. I wanted to show that. Oh, you can share. Yeah, you can you can please give me the the right to co-host and then I share. Okay, let me give you the right to co-host, then you share. Okay, you can share now. Yes, uh, I hope it is visible. I have shared this template, the template in uh, Adobe Illustrator. So yes. uh, especially those designers who are using Adobe Illustrator, I have shared this on the on the website in the comment section. Wow, good. And uh, yes. when you go to, to that template, you just simply open it yes. if you have an Adobe Illustrator and it has wow. the entity names, these templates over here. So you just simply wow. plug in. For, for instance, wow, uh, you, is... can just go, you can just go there and uh, plug in your name, maybe uh, Chinawataka. Yes. And uh, basically, then you just copy it and then you put it in your design. So wow. these templates are, are there online, which I've shared, and uh, they can help designers uh, this is something which you were saying last time. So they can yes. use these templates for free and uh, they can test the design process. And then also I wanted to, to say that uh, when it comes to Adventist Sun, I've also sh shared the, the link of where they can download Adventist Sun's, uh, Adventist Sun's phone. Good. And uh, if you, as you can see from here in my, on my screen, that if I, I highlight yes. this name, the entity name, it comes with Adventist Sun's logo. And every time you write, for instance, yes. for instance, if you write the word Adventist, the trademark appears. And if I write it, it appears. Uh, basically, it's just the internet flow, then the trademark will just appear automatically. There are those people who are using Poster My Wall. Poster My Wall is also a design, the design software. You can also input in Adventist Sun's logo and then it will help uh, the design process. Uh, yes, uh, Elder, that's wow. what I wanted to share. Well, uh, uh, Dr. Wahire, thank you so much. Um, that explains why the designs from your church are so good. You've taken the time to focus on that. I would like us to use that resource. Dr. Wahire, please share with me also that so that I can circulate it at large using my 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 communication channels. Thank you very much, Dr. Wahire, for, 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 for that, for that bit. It can help us a great deal. My senior, Pastor Rogers Kagwa, please. Uh, uh, thank you very much, Elder. This was uh, very good and very informative, as you can see thank in the you, comments. Now, there is something very important you, which, which we don't want to miss, Elder. Yes. Although yes. they have allowed us to use, they have taught us to use the colors and the logos, but remember, you cannot use church logos on something that doesn't belong yes. to the church. You cannot make, oh, yes, very important. even if you're a church very elder, important. you cannot make a hospital and then say, oh, St. Michael Hospital, because you're a church elder. You can't do that. Another thing, you cannot make, how do you call them? You cannot make, uh, how do you call they, 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 these cards, yeah? Those cards. You yes, cannot cards. make a business card for yourself or your church elder. No. And then you put their same Adventist church. You can't do that. Only the organizations which can be, um, which fall under geekers, you know, the general conference. Yes, uh, yes. yes. Those are the only ones that can use these logos. So the ones which are on the yearbook. Yes, you cannot. So be very careful. Don't make a letter. Uh, don't make a letterhead for your elder. Do not make a, a business card for, <laughs> for your women ministries director. No, these 
are reserved specifically for church workers who are salaried and pensionable. So that, that was something very important that people needed to know. Thank you very much, Pastor Kagwa. Thank you very much. And perhaps uh, the lines are open. Will... Yes, sir. Let our graphic designers be very careful about spellings. Some of these spellings uh -huh. embarrass us. The whole setup is nice. They have followed all the, uh, the grid and everything. Then the spellings yes. are terrible. Yes. Yes. Let us be very keen on spelling. My sister Sandra, we want to hear your voice. Sandra, you've been very helpful to me in planning for this. And I was, uh, I wanted you to say hi to people earlier on. Do you have anything you want to tell us? Sandra, doing very good designs. I think because of the influence of Dr. Wahire and uh, she joined Susan. Susan is another one who is doing very good designs when guided. Nelson Kitty also does very good designs. Um, I know going forward, we're going to have very excellent designs coming out. Yes, Sandra. Yes, thank you very much. It's thank for you. you. Yeah. Thank you, Elder, for this. It has really been a great opportunity because we really need opportunity this information. We needed it because quality is key. We have to be mindful of that. Thank you. We need to brand Thank you so much. Out there. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, Thank you so much. Uh, where is our friend Susan? Susan of Globulus. Pastor Kagwa, Susan left Susan, us. Susan was briefly taken away. She was briefly taken away. Yes. Yes. Pastor Simo Gerebe. Pastor Simo Gerebe. Pastor Simo Gerebe, are you there? Yes. Okay, we are yes, we still welcome questions. Hey, Pastor, we know you. We, we have a whole bishop here, and I would like to hear some words of blessing. Pastor Simogere, please. We want your comments and uh, a little word of encouragement to these members. Uh, well, you know, when a bishop Can takes the time to some attend your training. From Let's first meet those guys from Kasese. Um, Dr. Wahiro, please mute them. You, you are the host now. Dr. Wahiro. <laughs> we claim host and. <laughs> Yes, good day, okay. good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, Pastor. We want to thank Elder Gua for preparing this. It has been a blessing. I understand from now on, we're going to do things in the right way. Okay. I want to welcome all of you who have endeavored to find time to be here. Uh, most of those people from NBF. Greetings from NBF, and we pray that from now on, we're going to do things that bring out that image of the Seventh Avenue Church. May God bless us as Thank we you continue. Very. Thank you very much. Welcome. Thank you very much. Do we start? Thank you very much, Pastor. And uh, you were with us yesterday. Today, you've also been with us. We are greatly honored that you could spare the time to attend all the Welcome. trainings. Do we have any other comments? Any concern? Uh, please let's take note of the concerns that have been addressed, that have been raised by Pastor Kagwa. The church logo and symbols cannot be used just by anyone. Business cards, letterheads, they should be used by office bearers, institutions that are recognized by the church. Let us be very keen on the spellings in addition to following the other guidelines. Very important, dear ladies and gentlemen. 
Uh, any other comments? The elder may be something very small. Yes, Sandra. Yeah, I well know we have learned how to use the logos and everything, but even the, the design itself, we need to be mindful of where we put our logo. Yes. We need to mind about the designs, how you, like the templates you use. We have to be careful not to just put the logo rightfully on an ugly thing. I'm sorry to use that. Sorry to yes. use ugly, but we need to take caution of that thank you and i'm and i'm sure you've seen a number of them in what i've displayed haven't you yes very many do you agree with me yeah, that yeah. there are so many things that have not been done right even for our own yeah, bishop true, in elder. central uganda conference hey, pastor i don't know what we should do yeah. to those people who <laughs> for the bishop of central uganda conference they 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 the visual should be done right yeah whoever did that use... please next time next time you are to do it take it to pastor kagwa to clear yes. Yes. before you do yeah yes pastor you want to say something i have paul audit paul audit you can give your comment or ask your question Yes, Paul. Let him speak straight to the camera. You you speak straight to the camera. Maybe you remove the the, the, the headset. The head, yeah, the microphone. You are not clear. Can you speak directly to your micro? Uh. Can you send a text message? We can't hear you. Yes, please. Yes. I, I think we have lost him. Uh, we, we're not, you can send a text message and we shall read. I, I want to give, uh, it seems there aren't many questions and we are running out of time. I need to get on another engagement. I want to, to give opportunity to, to the communication directors to say what communication directors around. I see Pastor Twine. We will start with Pastor Twine. Then we go to Pastor Robinson and Pastor Isingoma. I see them. Pastor Twine, please. Pastor Twine. Yes, Elder. Am I audible? Yes. Yes, please. We have been very Churches, design posters, and 
We are losing you. Okay, we are not clear. The pastor is in Goma. Thank you so much. Pastor yes, please. Thank you, Pastor Twine. Yes. Yes, I, yes. I, I, I want to take this opportunity to appreciate the organizer of the training and all the participants. Thank you so much for your time. I hope by this training, the identity of our church in Uganda will not remain the same. May God bless us all in the name of Jesus. A problem with connection. Our meeting is ending in the next 10 minutes. I have seen Pastor Senuni. Pastor Senuni is in the house. When we hear a comment from Atwine Ronald, I would like to welcome the president of West Buganda Field, Pastor Senuni. We always feel so good when bishops are with us in such meetings. And I would like him to come and make the last comment before we close. Meaning if there is something that someone needs to say, we need it said before Pastor Senuni comes in. Atwine Ronald, Southwestern Uganda Field. Uh, yes, I can Elder. see your hand is raised. Yes, Elder. Yes, Ronald. Yes, there were some, there are some comments. There were some comments in the chat. Ed? Elder, the question yes, was sir. the email is submitted in the chat. Will, will you? Uh, find them or we need to submit them. Yes, I will pick them. I will pick those emails. Yes, please. And I'll do the needful. Yes. Then another another simple question. Yes. Someone was asking, using two logos on the same page, is it allowed? Two logos on the same page? Yeah. The other Why isolated. Someone... The other isolated and the, and the other... It doesn't oh, make sense. Allowed. It's not necessary. Okay, that's it, thank you. Thank you very much. I can see a departmental director from the union, Pastor Godfrey Lugwama is in the house. Pastor, do you want to say hi? Before I welcome Pastor Senuni Daniel to make his comments and we close the meeting. Pastor Lugwama. Uh, I want to thank you for the work well done. Thank you, Pastor. Though I've been up and down because I've been, I've been having another meeting, but I've also enjoyed the training. Thank you. 
I would like to say that now that we know, let's hope to do what is right. <laughs> the one who is also in the position, Thank you very much. I would be happy to see things which are produced in the right way. And since we are also in the in the remote like to in the right way. That please let us do what is right. May God bless you. Amen. Okay. Finally, I'm inviting Pastor Senuni Daniel. Pastor Senuni, are you there? Pastor Senuni? A twin run, please mute. Pastor Senuni. I see him logged on, but uh, we are not able to get him. Yes, Seth. Kasibante, the last comment. Thank you so much, Elder. Yes, sir. My question, my, 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 my question goes to Facebook. There is something called the Developers Studio. Yes. Does the same principle apply where you can have the logo of the church on Facebook on your right? Does the same principle apply? The creation grid. Thank you. The creation grid is applicable even on the digital displays that we have. If you go even on the websites, it is applicable there. Okay, I want to thank everyone for participating in this meeting. I feel very free to contact us in the communication department for any assistance as we implement this uh, visual new visual identity for the Seventh Day Adventist Church. Uh, we have uh, a communicator from Kampala Central Church, Seventh Day Adventist. Juguna. So I'm now requesting our senior, Njuguna. Yes, Njuguna, are you there? Yes, yes. I'm here. Njuguna is, uh, is, is a very great resource as, at the Seventh-day Adventist Church Kampala Central. He is one of uh, the key people behind uh, the live streaming you see and how messages get out to the people. I want you to make a last comment and you pray for us. We want to benefit from your prayers and then we close the meeting. <laughs> Okay, uh, I have thank you so much. The last for the, mm. Thank you so much, Elder, for the presentation and for the organization of the whole seminar. Uh, for sure, some of the things also I, I didn't know about them. I still, I mean, I was still the old school. But I thank you so much for the opportunity that you've given us to know more about the, the branding uh, or requirements. And, um, but, uh, but I think, uh, as we go on, I think uh, we need more of the information. I think from you, I think you're just going to do uh, more of the research in regards to that. Yes. Yes. We have lost you. I think we've lost our brother, Jacob Njuguna. Yes, Mr. Njuguna.
please unmute. You are muted. Okay, we are running out of time. Pastor Kagwa. Yes, Elder. Pastor, please pray for us. Okay, let us we pray. We have just one minute and we will be off. Loving Father, thank you for this meeting. We need to do things the right way. And we ask your blessings so that we can do them. Help us to be learners and help us to be implementers. Bless all our communicators, bless our graphic designers, and let your church shine because of their good work in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. We can now open our videos and we just wave before we are. Thank you so much, everyone who has attended. The members from North Buganda Field, thank you so much. From West Buganda Field, thank you so much. God bless you. God bless you. Can, 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 okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.